You've got to be able to identify the 10 killer constraints that that you that people have. So things like having, and I'll give a couple examples, bulletproof, right? They're bulletproof. So they're overconfident. That's dangerous. I've had guys in this business that lose the the ability to be self-aware because they're like, I know how to do this already. You don't need to tell me. You don't understand what I'm going through. That That is a bulletproof attitude, which is just a screen for someone who's overconfident and is it's going to hurt them, and it does. How old are you going to be before you start to experience life like you want it? I want to tell you right now, whether you like it or not, there is a better way to do business. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Business for Builders podcast. My name is Max. I'm your host, and uh, I'm the CEO here at Smith & Sons uh, Remodeling Experts here in Canada. Uh, welcome to you if you're on YouTube land. Great to have you with us. Uh, hopefully, uh, you'll get something out of the time that you spend with us uh, in the next little while here today or tonight depending on where you are. Um, look, you know, I think following on from last week, uh, we we talked about, ugh, it's such a it's such a big deal what's going on right now. I've had, you know, the the, the request for coaching has been fairly overwhelming and I'm, I'm quite humbled um, by having had a lot of communication with with uh, different folks over the, the last little while uh, as, as it relates to uh, the elite businessadvisory.com, which is is, the, is is my coaching business that I've just launched. And last week, you know, there's three parts to what we focus on when we talk about structure. Um, you know, uh, and it's we, we talked about time last week, and I'm going to double down on uh, team today, and then next week I'm going to double down on uh, on money. So, uh, yeah, if you've if you've been keeping up, then you'll be you'll understand where I'm coming from. But uh, Bit of housekeeping before we get started. Uh, like and subscribe, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, check out elitebusinessadvisory.com. Uh, you can email me at max at elitebusinessadvisory.com. And um, this is where for those that really want to double down and um, get amongst it as far as on an, an official uh, business coaching uh, relationship, then um, I'm all for having a quick chat with you and, and uh, we'll run down a few of the details. Uh, and that's going to be exciting. For anything else, look, feel free, max at businessforbuilders.ca. You can shoot me an email there. But uh, all this information regarding uh, Business for Builders and uh, elitebusinessadvisory.com will be in the show notes. So um, jump down there. Uh, and look, you know, long and the short, if you want to book an appointment with me, go to that website, elite, uh, elitebusinessadvisory.com. Hit the uh, book a consultation. That'll end up in my calendar. And you and I can jump on a Zoom call for 30 minutes. So um Let's get amongst it. I know it sounds like I'm on uh, 1.5 audio speed right now, but I have got a shit ton to get through, and I'm um, really excited about it. So what I'm doing is, um, when you get a, if you if we get a 30 minute meeting out the way, um, and we're sort of we've done a little bit of an understanding of where we're up to and where your business is up to, I will do a 60 minute deep dive of what we call a complimentary coaching session. And we will dive through 21 of our, what we call silver bullets. Now, um, you know, a silver bullet is, is a bit of a term that we use just to sort of identify different aspects within the business that we're trying to sort of uh, dictate to our, our clients around, okay, this is, what, this, is re- this is what's required and this is what we're going to do about it. So a silver bullet is just a metaphor for a simple, seemingly magical solution for a difficult problem. Um, you know, is what we do magical? Well, maybe. Um, but uh, what we're trying to do is is just break down your business and look at the areas that where you where you're strong and where you look at the areas where maybe you're not so strong. And we really want to um, you know d- deliver some solutions. And you know I appreciate you guys and gals you know watching and looking looking on and, and having a listen on the podcast. Um, but there is definitely a point where you're going to hit your limit as it relates to this generic information that I'm throwing down because your business is very different to the next business, the next guy or gal's business. So it's super important that we maybe take more of a customized approach to your business uh, and the success of your business and really go about an organized structure and plan uh, to develop, you know, to help you develop a high performance, highly profitable business. So uh, today, what we're going to talk about, um, and for time's sake, I'm going to try and get through this as quickly as possible, but um, there's uh, there's ten points in or a part of the team development part of uh, what we do here, the silver bullets. So, um, like I said, next week we're going to do the money side of things, um, but this week we are going to focus on uh, team and how we go about building team and what does it do uh, to improve, uh, you know, getting our time back as well. So, uh, look, we're going to get cracking here. So, what I'm going to actually pull from is a PowerPoint that I would use that I would share with you. 
um, that we would do uh, in that complimentary coaching session. What I'm going to do is uh, break this down on this podcast so I can actually send folks and you can actually have a listen to this before. Um, I'm not sure how much stuff we're going to throw up on your screen if you're watching uh, YouTube, but we'll talk about that after we, um, you know, just prior to sort of launching the show uh, next week. So, um, yeah, here we go. So, look, under under team, the silver bullets we got, and just think about the silver bullets as tactics, tools, resources, and plans, and systems that identify, well, that help you uh, really alleviate some of the stress or systemize your business at the highest level. Now, you've heard me say before that businesses run off the back of good systems and good humans uh, good humans uh, need those systems to run the business. And so good humans, good systems, highly profitable, high performance business is what we want. So um, we're focusing today on, uh, you know, these silver bullets. To give you a quick rundown, we're going to do 10 of them. Um, so I'm going to rush through these. Uh, strategic plan is the first one. Uh, team building system is uh, the second one. Key performance indicator system. That's number three. Number four is performance incentive plan. Number five is employee acquisition plan. Uh, number six is psychometric profiling process. Number seven is uh, team meeting rhythm. Uh, number eight is the lean program. Number nine is organizational plan. And number 10 is leadership development plan. So, uh, you know, there's processes, plans, programs, systems, all that sort of biz. And we're going to quickly just uh, expose to you what I do with clients and what I do with uh, business owners in those areas. And like I said, next week we'll cover off uh, stuff that's money oriented. So here we go, strategic plan. And a, str a strategic plan, it's an evolving written plan that sets forth the vision, the mission, and the values of your company, long and short range goals and KPIs to measure progress so that your team moves together as one. So when I have you in as, um, you know, like all of my guys have gone through the training process when they bought a franchise, and it's a four day. Uh, it's a four day process. The last day is strategic planning and business development. Um, you know, I think we did a pretty good job. You know, on that. But I know we can do much better. And so the strategic plan really outlines uh, a lot of information. If you're on this podcast, sorry, if you're on a video call with me right now, uh, you would actually be able to see um, what we do in a one page strategic plan. So um, that we're going to outline in that strategic plan. Uh, the, the strengths of your organization, the weaknesses of your organization, the uh, opportunities and the threats. Uh, we're going to really nail down on your core beliefs and really, you know, what we're talking about is a business culture in this sense. So, uh, you know, really it's important that the, the, the core values are things that mean a lot to you that really need to be disseminated in the business and in the culture of your business because you don't want to be standing for one thing and then you have someone in your team who is not familiar with that core value. And you might hang on to that core value that something like, you know, we start well, we finish strong, or uh, we value open, honest communication, or we we work, you know, we work harder, we work smarter, not harder, that sort of thing. So there's a lot of these values, and you can Google it, it's all different values, but a little, a lot of that is important to you. So I'm not going to go through the whole strategic plan because it's one uh, one aspect of 10 of these plans and resources and systems. Uh, we're going to want to find out the why of your business. So we're going to want a, uh, you know, a 10 to 30 year plan, and that might blow your mind. That's cool. You know, there's probably, a, uh, we call a, a BHAG, a, very, uh, a big, hairy, audacious goal. And so we're going to run through that. We're going to talk about your targets, which are th three to five year. We're going to talk about goals, which is your one year. And then we're going to look at your action plans, which is the how to, and they're, they're quarterly. And then we're going to look at the themes that go with your, your, your uh, quarterly and your year plan. Uh, and then, then we we'll talk about baseline. So what's the hist historical data that we're going to start with uh, when we start designing the strategic plan uh, for your business? So there's a lot involved. There's probably two to four hours, probably about two to four hours to do a strategic plan. So that's something that we'll kick off with in the first month alongside um, you know, rolling out the coaching program with you if, if you do come on board with uh, Elite Business. Now, yep, so the strategic plan is made up of the SWOT analysis, the core values and beliefs, uh, your big, hairy, audacious goal, a lot of the targets, goals, actions, uh, rocks and accountabilities will double down on rocks. They're the things that you must achieve this quarter, usually. Uh, we're going to talk about KPIs. Super important that we have the right KPIs to monitor the performance of your business. Uh, also, in the assessment of, your, of the business, we want to use those KPIs as a benchmark. We want to talk about your brand promise and your elevator pitch. Uh, and uh, of course, we want to look at your annual, uh, your annual and your quarterly themes. I know I'm running fast, but this is what we, we're going to cover really quick uh, in our first uh, complimentary coaching session to give you a bit of an understanding, and we can talk a little bit more in detail about that in your first complimentary coaching session. Be sure to, uh, if you're interested, visit EliteBusinessAdvisory.com. 
go to the uh, book consult book consultation now button. Um, that'll give you a bit of an eyeball on my calendar, uh, my elite business calendar, and uh, you can just pick a spot there that uh, suits you. And uh, I will uh, be looking forward to meet with you at that time. Okay, team building system. So TBS, a reliable system for placing your team members in the right, uh, sorry, in roles best suited to their strengths and building them into a powerful, cohesive and committed team that delivers business results. Uh, what you want is you want the right people in the right seats behaving the right way. Ultimately, you've had maybe, uh, you know, people that have, 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 have done really well. They've got some great, great skills, but they just don't play well with the other boys and girls. Um, or you've got some really nice people that just don't have the skills. Like you've got to make sure that we we uh, get the attention of the right talent. We're able to uh, recruit and onboard the right talent and we're able to retain the right talent. Uh, so yeah, right people, right seats uh, and, uh, you know, behaving the right way. That's our team building system. Um, we talk about some team dimensions and some profiles. Uh, and so we go through a list of things. So we describe the preferred role. We explore strengths and challenges. We gain insight into work habits. We learn about team members' contributions. We learn how to work effectively as a team. Um, we want to we want to focus on how we go about developing a, 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 a oh, geez, what's the word? We want to develop a, a program whereby we know what the steps are to reaching uh, and having the ability in the business to achieve high results. Uh, there's a guy out there by the name of Patrick uh, Lencioni. Uh, he wrote a great book called The Five Behaviors of a Cohesive Team. I'd recommend you have a, have a look at that one. And he talks about the different steps up the pyramid, um, starting with developing trust, having healthy conflict, um, understanding the, the commitment to each other in the business is super important, understanding the power of accountability, and then obviously uh, looking at the results that that program and that attitude, if you've got team, team members on board that are good for it, um, what the results that that, that, uh, that initiative will bring about in your business. Okay, the next one here is uh, key performance indicator system. So KPIs, uh, that's an elegant system for measuring and reporting the critical numbers in your business so everyone knows how their efforts are either making or breaking your business. And so KPIs uh, for us guys in construction, I mean, if you're in other types of businesses, there's a slight deviation away from these KPIs. But what we're looking at is making sure we're looking at your under and over billing. So uh, that could be called uh, also work in progress accounting. It's double entry bookkeeping. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, we're doing that every month. Um, and of course, we want to do revenue assessments. So we might look at what we just did for the last quarter. We want to assess that based on this time last year. How is the business progressing? If there was a downturn in the revenue, why was that? Uh, is the is the reason legitimate, or is it a, a trend that is uh, you know? Because uh, I'm telling you, builders go broke very slowly, like death by a thousand paper cuts, and uh, it really does fatigue us builders, guys and gals. Uh, and we need to make sure that. If we have got a, a problem, you know, let's call it a structural issue within our business, uh, and that let's say the finances are a little bit tight, we need to have ways to assess these things. So we need that checklist uh, as far as KPIs. Uh, another one is gross profit. We need to be looking at our gross profit percentage and making sure that you know we are achieving uh, a reasonable amount, of, uh, a reasonable amount of gross profit. Uh, I would say if you're doing renos, you need to be achieving a thirty percent gross profit. Um, you, you should be achieving a net profit percentage of more than 10%. Anything in the single single digits is not going in the right direction. You've got to get that up. And then your fixed expense uh, or your fixed cost per month uh, for your business. And really, we want to work a percentage or a fixed expense ratio, um, which is normally around the 15% mark. If you're over that, then you, you know, you're technically you're moving into the top heavy zone and you want to make sure that's going to be eating into your profit margin. So that affects your gross profit as well. Uh, and, your, and your net profit. So um, yeah, let's. Uh, that's what we've got to get these KPIs underway. We've got systems to help you develop uh, each of these KPI, you know, systems. But um, you know, like I just spelled out, they're the ones. They're probably the, the really important ones. If you're in the construction sector, if you're in another uh, industry or sector, then those KPIs uh, there'll be similarities, but they they may may be distinctly different for your industry. Um, hit me up on email if you've got any questions about uh, that. Max at EliteBusinessAdvisory.com. Uh, okay, performance incentive plan. Now, this is where we want to uh, have good team working in our business. 
Uh, and so the, our ability to not just attract, train, and you know, uh, you know, onboard these folks, we want to retain them. We do not want them getting headhunted. And so it's important that we have an incentive plan. So an incentive plan is one that remo- rewards your team members for exceptional performance and motivates them to work as hard as you do and care about the business as if it was their own. Now, that is a pretty tall order, um, and I'm not sure that I've met too many business owners that says, you should see my team. They all run the business like it's their own. Uh, I don't see that very often. And so that just begs the question, well, why is it not? And the other question would be, if it's not, uh, what can we do uh, to make that happen? So uh, let's talk about that. Um, a guy by the name of Tom Peters is an author. Uh, most employees, and you might relate to this, most employees are motivated, energetic, committed, enthusiastic, and loyal except for the eight hours they work for you. Ha, huh. uh, yeah, I'd agree with that. Okay, so what we've got is, if you could see this slide, and, and maybe we could put this up, uh, but uh, we've got a performance incentive plan that we recommend. This is not like carved in stone. It's not what you should do. We understand that having you know carpenters or laborers, it's very hard to create incentive plans for that scope. Certainly in the sales world, where they're all, there's some folks that are used to working commission only, um, they're very much accustomed to, to you know, getting no base salary, uh, but we're just working on a full commission. So um, there's breakdowns here. There's four various columns, and it's going to be a little bit ex- hard to explain, but I want to tell you um, what we do is we, we, we slowly scale down the base salary amount, and we slowly increase uh, over and above 100% as to what you can achieve off the back of an incentive plan. So it is, it does exactly what it says. It incentivizes activity, uh, proactivity, and production and output, not just getting paid to show up. You know, this is not just you get you get attendance money. This is like we need productivity. And and so we want to reward those that are uh, that work hard and that are diligent and that are committed. Uh, we don't like those that are lazy to be kind of uh, insulated from, uh, you know, accountability. And so uh, this is certainly one way of, uh, you know, incentivizing uh, your business whereby you can, you know, get a job done in a certain amount of time and maybe, you know, work out some sort of uh, profit share, if you like, you know, in some small percentage in some sort of small way. Because the thing is, what you've got to do, it's no different if we're in retail and we're trying to set ourselves apart from the rest of the builders and general contractors out there. Well, how is it that that we're setting ourselves apart as an employer from our team members? Because the other guy is going to come along and offer them an extra two bucks an hour and they're like, fine, I'll take it. See ya. That's it. We've got to make it so good that they don't want to leave. And that's really where it's going because there's nothing worse than having someone join your team who's excellent and then 12 months later they, uh, they found a better offer. That is bad news to you as a uh, business owner. Right. So talking about getting good employees, how do we do that? We have an employee acquisition plan, uh, a practical plan to win the battle for top talent by consistently generating more than enough leads or inquiry for uh, employee inquiry, that is, screening out non-performers and using a skills-based test drive process and psychometrics to choose team members that deliver results. So again, we want the right people in the right seats behaving the right way. Um, The way we do that, we obviously, uh, we create an ad uh, we generate leads via the uh, the said ad. We do a virtual interview, which might be different if you're a builder used to getting guys on a building site. And then we test drive them where you then might get them in. So there's an interview process that we would recommend um, to really work hard on understanding uh, where that individual is uh, when they come to you and put their hand up and say, yeah, I wouldn't mind applying for the job. Okay, so as part of that acquisition, uh, the employee acquisition acquisition plan, we've got psychometric profiling. So this is a proven process for avoiding mishires by using psychometric assessment tools to evaluate and deselect candidates based on position-specific benchmarks. So um, in a high turnover, when using the psychometric profiling process in high turnover industries, uh, the the ability to uh, really match the right people to the right jobs within companies, uh, the mishires are reduced by 50%. And in low turnover industries, and we might say construction, it could be low low turnover. Um, it actually reduces it by by down to one fifth. So um, you go from you know having um, quit people that quit and fired going from say a twenty five percent number down to a five percent. And for those that are quitting or fired after fourteen months, it goes from thirty four percent down to eight percent. So uh, it's pretty important that we do have a really structured approach to uh, acquisition, employee acquisition, and recruiting. Uh, the psychometric profiling process. I mean, if you were to use this, that the, the uh, you know the job matching assessment, which is essentially what we're talking about, 
we use a, we use several systems. You know, the interview with assessments. Uh, you know, we do reference checks. Obviously, behavior and personality assessments, abilities assessment, interest assessment, uh, and then of course the job match uh, the job matching assessment. And it's got about an eighty seven point five percent. Uh, strike rate so the percentage of success is significantly greater which is what you really a you don't want to go spend days and days and days employing all of these people you want to be able to figure out who are the players and then of the you know top 10 or 15 percent you want to be able to pick out uh the uh, the best talent that's that's there available okay team meeting rhythm um this is whereby you know team huddles are super important Understanding how you're going to uh, really deliberate with your your middle management, so your your project managers and or your, your superintendents or your supervisors. Uh, a team meeting rhythm, really it's just a disciplined rhythm of a recurring team meetings focused on goal setting, alignment, reporting, and accountability that occur on an annual, quarterly, monthly, weekly, daily basis, right? So obviously you're going to meet with, you know, your, if you're a superintendent or your superintendent is going to probably have toolbox talks, you know, every day. Um, whereas you might, if you've got business partners who are silent business partners, they might only want to meet every quarterly and just look at the numbers. So uh, either way, no matter which one of those meetings that you do and everything in between, um, you want to make sure that you've got a rhythm to those meetings. You do not want to be stuck in non-productive, boring un, you know, meetings that just waste everybody's time. And so it's important that we understand in advance what the agenda is, how we're going to run and how we're going to chair the meeting. And so these are the rhythms that we need to really uh, define uh, so that we don't spend uh, time in meetings wasting time. Um, something that's super important as it relates to team meeting, and I probably won't go into this now, uh, I would actually urge you, and I think we'll put a, a copy of this book up. Um, it's called Mastering the Rockefeller Habits uh, by, Vern, uh, by Vern Harnish, and uh, it's it's a really good quality uh, book. I've listened to the audio book, and I have actually ordered, ordered, ordered the the hard copy as well. And it really is, uh, you know, a great book. There's another one there by Vern called uh, Scaling Up, and uh, it's probably a little bit more technical. So I would I would recommend that you uh, grab hold of this book from uh, Amazon and start having a read. And I tell you what I'll do is if if you were to come on as a client, one of the first things I'm going to do as part of the launch is recommend that you get amongst that and read that book because what that does, there's a lot of things that we everything that we do here, a lot of that has come out the back of the the you know the Rockefeller habits. And, and so when we, when we come together as a business coach and a client, we've obviously got the joint, uh, you know, the, the, the joint target of growing and developing a highly successful, high performance, highly profitable business. And this is really what is the, the you know, the playbook for that, that early build, let's say uh, up to $10 million. So if you're sitting there going, well, I do half a million dollars, okay, well, this book is going to help you get to 10 million. And I'd like to think that me as a coach would also help you get there. Um, side note too, just so you know, um, we're, we're using this coaching program to actually um, help us uh, bring on uh, franchised operators with Smith & Sons. So we, we actually use this for six months so that it's a try before you buy. So if you're interested in a franchise, great, but guess what? You're going to have to do the six months coaching with me uh, before, before we even uh, start considering the options around franchise purchase in your area. So anyway, uh, team meeting rhythm. Uh, that's definitely important. Uh, want to make good use of your time. Right, lean program. So that's an ongoing program for rallying your team around a commitment to eliminate uh, wasted time, material, and movement so you can dramatically improve operational efficiencies, cut production costs, and compete more effectively. Super important. So what we want to identify and eliminate is overproduction, inventory, waiting time, defects, wasted motion, um, doing things twice, that sort of thing, and transportation, and then processing. We want to make sure that we are identifying and uh, and eliminating areas where we can actually make improvements that will create efficiency. Uh, weekly Kaizen meetings are something that we'll talk about. Kaizen meeting uh, is designed to support an effective short-term brainstorming session that focuses on a single challenge and improves an existing process. And so we want to identify areas of waste. We want to identify causes of waste. We want to prioritize areas to be eliminated first. We want to identify countermeasures. We want to assign accountabilities and dates. Review your KPIs to measure progress on a quarterly basis usually. Uh, revise countermeasures as necessary. Celebrate wins and reward 
progress. So you can see that just, you know, we, we, there's, there's so much involved in all of these areas of the business, your head's going to blow up. You just, this is why having someone like myself that can really keep you accountable, uh, it's super important. Okay, the next thing after the lean program is the organizational plan. It's a detailed plan to clarify reporting relationships by building an organizational chart or an org chart, you might have heard of that, and creating job descriptions so work gets done efficiently and your business can sustain long-term growth. Uh, so as part of the uh, as part of the launch, we want to nail down a, an organizational plan or an org chart to figure out where your folks and yourself are up to. Um, the next one here is leadership development plan. Now, I always talk about you know developing the leader that's within you, the person who's running and owning the business. Super important. So a leadership development plan is an intentional process for de developing high potential leaders in your business, incentivizing their long term commitment with profit sharing, and laying the groundwork for your eventual succession. Okay, so there's always that point. I, I think I've told some stories in the last couple of episodes whereby you know both a mechanic buddy of mine in this town and my hairdresser actually started working in both of those companies uh, at grassroots and they slowly stuck around and, and got the skills and then were actually offered the business. So um, that's something that you might end up doing uh, in, in or with your business. All right, the leadership development plan goes through a few stages. Um, when you have people brought on, they just they take a position um, and they just kind of have rights as, as, as employees and they follow you because they have to, you know, go here, do this, do that. That's how it works. Uh, the next one up is permission. So we're talking relationships. People follow because they want to. So, you know, there's there's starting to be more of, if, if you've got people in your team who have been around a while, you'll start to find that they they really want to be there because they like the business that you've developed thus far. They like the way you lead the business. So that's super important to look out for. The next one up is production. So now we're talking results. People follow you because of what you have done for the, the business or the organization or the company. Uh, the next one is people development. So now we're talking about us as leaders uh, re reproducing, uh, or, you know, people that would act in a similar way that we would. So people follow you because of what you've done for them. So you might have invested in them. You might have, you know, looked after them very well fiscally. You might have given them the incentives and they're very committed. The, these people are uh, very much taking on your demeanor as the business owner or a very similar demeanor you, as you as the business owner. Final one is the pinnacle. It's respect. People follow because of who you are and what you represent. So that's, you know, that's the highest level there. Um, and that's the kind of humans that you're going to want around you. When I talk about having good systems, you know, to run a good business, and then I talk about good humans to run those systems, um, this is what you've got to develop. This will not happen by default. This hap this has to happen by design. So it's, I'm really I'm, I'm really happy about throwing, throwing this all out there in the, the really nuts and bolts that it is in the steak and potatoes. So we can really, you can really understand the detail that goes into building a high performance business. It's probably why it is that you don't know too many people that have built a high performance business because it's not easy and it's a long-term gig. So um, brace for impact, I would say. Um, right, so leadership development plan. Uh, what goes along with that is you've got to be able to identify the 10 killer constraints that that you that people have so things like having you know i'll give a couple examples bulletproof right they're bulletproof so they're overconfident that's dangerous i've had guys in this business that lose the the ability to be self-aware because they're like i know how to do this already you don't need to tell me you don't understand what i'm going through that that is a bulletproof attitude which is just a screen for someone who's overconfident and is it's going to hurt them and it does um you know different ones in there is you know marshmallow they're over nurturing um, you know, it's interesting. I, uh, I got one of my guys right now. We have a situation and I think he's just been over nurturing. He's been the nicest guy to this client and the client's just been a Royal POS. And so, uh, that sometimes can really, it, it really does affect your business because you've got to not let the tail wag the dog. Um, they will buy in accordance with your selling process. So, uh, yeah, I won't get started on that one. That'll get us going for way too long. Okay, just understand that if you, if these personal constraints and, and the, that are negative, that will pull down your ability to generate revenue. And so, if we have good personalities in the business, that will drive that will help us drive revenue up. If you have burst, bad personalities in your business, that's actually going to pull revenue down, or it's going to limit the amount of revenue revenue that you create in the lifetime of your business. Right. So that 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 is ten. That is the ten. Uh, is that is that the ten? That is the 10, because next next week we're going to go into the money silver bullets. So I'm just going to quickly, I've been rolling through this this uh, PowerPoint, so I'm going to go back because I want to I want to wrap up. I don't know how long we've been going. Ooh, we've, we've definitely covered a bit of ground, haven't we? All right, give me a sec. Stay with me. Here it is. Right, so number one was strategic plan. This is what we're going to cover as it relates to team. 
Uh, number one was strategic planning. Number two was team building systems. Number three was key performance indicator system. Number four was performance incentive plan. Number five was employee acquisition plan. Number six was a psychometric profiling process. Uh, number seven is team meeting rhythm. Number eight is lean program. Number nine is organizational plan. And number 10 is leadership development program or plan. So uh, be sure to leave comments below, um, like and subscribe, all that kind of wonderful stuff. Um, if you want more information, go visit uh, elitebusinessadvisory.com. Shoot me an email, max at elitebusinessadvisory.com. Uh, you can also go and book a consultation there and you can meet with me for 30 minutes on a video call. Would love to do that. And we'll run through a bit of a get an understanding of where you're up to in your business and uh, some of the challenges and some of the wins that you're having. Um, but be sure to, um, yeah, stay in touch with us. And uh, yeah, we'll see you on the next episode. Go build a kick-ass business. Cheers.